I have the pleasure of introducing our National Leadership Academy for the Public's Health, culminating team report. Our team has gone through leadership metamorphosis over the past year and have conquered the facets of situational leadership, transformative leadership, listening leadership, facilitative leadership, reflective practice, and emotional intelligence. This video will incorporate our team leadership goals, individual leadership growth, community health improvement project, next steps moving forward with thoughts on our big picture, and finally with team thoughts on Superstorm Sandy and our leadership in action. For those of you who are watching this video and do not know what NLAF is all about, let me just say this. NLAF is an academy geared towards developing and fine-tuning public health professionals and leaders. To me, NLAF is more than an academy. It is a forum for public health professionals to come together, motivate one another, and make real-world changes for the betterment of the public's health. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoy it. If our big picture document was a road, it would be a long and winding one. Our initial big picture document began prior to our retreat in Atlanta, Georgia. Our team's focus was on designing a project to solve what seems to be a national problem of only, of only providing secondary and tertiary prevention methods to reduce child blood lead levels. Burlington County is fortunate enough to have a very advanced IT department, and they have very well-versed geographic information system specialists that were able to aid in our designing of a program to pinpoint areas of concern and children at risk for childhood lead poisonings. Observing our big picture document, one can note that pathways to change is woven between our numerous stakeholders, the context of our project, and critical leadership challenges. Our big picture document gave our team the foundation for our project moving forward. The events of Hurricane Sandy resulted in a hiatus from our initial team project. Our team members were spread out as first responders, environmental specialists, emergency operations center leaders, evacuation site nurses, and shelter nurses. Sandy tested our leadership knowledge in action and required each of our team members to evaluate what was learned through NLAF and how to apply it to real world settings. What wasn't taught in NLAF that we were not prepared for was dealing with one of the worst natural disasters to ever occur on the East Coast, let alone in our backyards. More so, we were handling people that had lost their homes, all of their belongings, and had nothing to go back to. Weeks after immediate recovery effort had subsided, our team was determined to organize our efforts for Sandy within a big picture document. This document is my personal favorite of our project because it took affirmative emergency response action and retrospectively combined it with the format for a big picture document to organize our efforts for Sandy and most everything that our team was dealing with during the disaster. Finally, our last big picture document was the culmination of all of the changes of our big picture document. A major change that should be noted is that our team added more emphasis on performing blood lead screens for children due to the very low levels of screenings in our county. Our team held free blood lead screenings for children at Head Starts in conjunction with Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. Additionally, our stakeholders were significantly increased in numbers as a result of our project's work and involvement in the community. <laughs> has been defined by the big picture document which we worked on through MLAF over the past year. It's gone through many transformations including uh, our original big picture document which we created in May of 2012. Uh, we completed it, sent it to our coach Joyce Essien mm -hmm. and uh, it's gone through many transformations up until now and uh, what we're going to do now is discuss it a little bit. I think the document was a really good process for us to go through because we uncovered areas that we had never ventured before, right. thought about different avenues mm -hmm. um, that I don't think we would have found if we hadn't done the big picture document. I think it was a way for us to really frame and, and structure the process. It was very effective in doing it. I think it also provided a good uh, framework for where we, were, where we started and ultimately where we ended, uh, not only with our stakeholders, but uh, lessons learned, uh, the context, and uh, our pathways to change. The tool was good too because I was an add-on because Holly couldn't make it to mm -hmm. the training and to catch up, it was easily done just by looking at the big picture and, know, and knowing where the goals were. That it provided a good backdrop and context for the population that we're trying to outreach to 
and also the unique problems that um, they are faced with. So it allowed us to investigate that and examine it and place it in um, different vantage points so that we could um, find out who would be appropriate stakeholders, who would be um, appropriate uh, policy makers that we would need to reach out to. So it was really helpful in the planning process as well. Our team leadership goals were a work in progress over the past year. These goals continually morphed as we stepped further in our project and as our relationships changed between team members, but also among stakeholders involved in our project. Of our five leadership goals, the key overarching goal that acted as a constant focal point for our team was leading people, and more specifically, leveraging each team member's sphere of influence in respective organizations and specialties. When our group first sat down to discuss our project, Benefits to intersectoral collaboration were identified through observing gaps in our project focus and determining which agency or group could assist with that specific facet of the project. Our team sought diverse expertise through these partnerships and in turn, our newfound stakeholder involvement provided access to broader constituencies and networks. Through leading the team, my focus is going to include managing change as well as understanding and managing the organization or team awareness, as I like to call it. Leading self will need to incorporate developing adaptability to succeed in all ventures and in all environments. Finally, leading others, from the athletic field to the office, communicating effectively is of the most importance. As a coach, I always tell my players to talk to one another and help each other out. However, it is important to note that talking for the sake of talking does not guarantee progress. Communicating with purpose and within the context of those around you to make them understand is really what's important. We were asked to select the leadership goal to, to speak about, and, you know, I looked at the goals that I developed, and, you know, officially, uh, my goal was to develop the facilitative and transformative leadership competence, which facilitates a model of influence that leverages shared values and resources among a diversity of stakeholders toward the achievement of the future vision and goals. So that's the leadership speak. But our coach... Uh, Dr. Joyce Essien, throughout this entire process, has sent us uh, an amazing amount of information to reflect upon, and there is this particular article uh, that I really like a lot called Reflective Practices for Transformational Leaders by Judy Thorne Brown. And in it, she talks about an article that she wrote specifically about transformational leadership, and this is what she said. Transformational leaders take the time to see into their own processes, to disclose their feelings and thinking, to be honest about themselves, their train of thought, their thinking, their reservations, and their struggles. She goes on further to talk about really understanding human nature and understanding patterns of behavior. And well before, you know, I went through any in lab training or thought about what it meant to be a leader. I've always fancied myself to be a student of human nature and really did try to understand patterns of behavior because central to transformational leadership is really the ability to create a vision and then inspire people around that vision. I would like to discuss my third personal goal to develop listening leadership competencies to enrich the dialogue among diverse constituencies and stakeholders such that value, respect, and innovation is generated and informed by the contributions of diverse stakeholders who listen responsibly and respectfully rather than reactively across the gender-race divide within the nursing profession. I have a true desire to inspire my colleagues and students. Furthermore, I am concerned with their personal and professional advancement. This is consistent with a more nurturing, inclusive, dynamic, engaging, and inspiring leadership style. These attributes fall under the auspices of transformational leadership. I am seeking to create a leadership style that is genuine and participatory in nature, with clearly defined goals and objectives. This is congruent with a social justice perspective of leadership. I believe I am currently practicing aspects of transformational leadership influenced by the tenets of social justice theory. I am striving to use coaching, listening, and facilitative measures when working with students and peers. 
The NLAF experience helped reinforce my style of leadership. I don't have a large working staff, but I have over 65 stakeholders in my coalitions. My leadership style has always been one that builds on relationships. I like to surround myself with talented people. It's amazing what a group effort can accomplish. I feel more inspired now. So when it comes to my own individual leadership goals, it was a challenge for me to write them to begin with because, um, you know, leadership is a very nebulous thing to me. And so um, in terms of my own leadership that I wanted to bring out of this project was I really wanted to define my leadership skills and learn other techniques and methods that were out there that I could incorporate into my leadership. Um, over the last year, I've taken a, a larger role in leadership within the health department, and I've struggled with how to handle certain situations, and so this project has allowed me to really develop some of those leadership skills, learn about new things that I can bring to the table, and start to gain more confidence um, in being a leader and, and those different types of leadership skills. So what are my immediate challenges? You know, to step up and be a leader, you incur some personal risk while endeavoring to remain authentic, you know, in an environment sometimes where it's not always safe to do so. My challenge is expanding the dialogue within the nursing profession regarding the elephant in the room, the isms, how classism, racism, and sexism influences our effectiveness as practitioners and leaders, and how to open the dialogue in a substantive way regarding how current leadership is failing to recognize the impact of the isms on minority student, faculty, and administrator recruitment and retention. I recognize the efforts of the Sullivan Commission report, but I guess what I'm saying is that we have not made substantial strides in improving the racial composition of health professions, which has an impact on health disparities and the provision of culturally appropriate care. In the words of Secretary Sebelius, it is time to refocus, reinforce, and repeat the message that health disparities exist and that health equity benefits everyone. This starts, I believe, with the encouragement and cultivation of a diverse healthcare workforce. In terms of the project, where I see some challenges lying ahead in terms of leadership is the fact that, you know, our entire team is so dynamic that we get pulled into so many different projects. So trying to keep us focused on this project and, and keep it moving forward is going to be a difficult because we are all leaders in our respective organizations and you know to try to pull us together um, on a continuing basis to keep our project moving forward I think is going to be difficult for us to do and I think that that's the main challenge that we have. Our big picture document didn't end uh, with our original project uh, of, of childhood lead poisoning. It actually branched out into Hurricane Sandy, uh, which our community was hit and our state was hit pretty hard with. And as a result, uh, we transformed our original big picture document into our relief efforts and uh, uh, recovery efforts for Hurricane Sandy. Uh, as a result, it allowed us to put um, pretty much everything in terms of our response down on paper. And uh, as a result, it gave us a good uh, glimpse into uh, our concerted efforts into where we were go and in our desired state uh, recovering from the hurricane. I think this is really where we got to put uh, all the things that we've learned um, through NLAP in the practice. So this is really about, you know, leadership in action. Uh, for me, it was striking. Um, my, my role here is Director of Nursing um, for Bologna County Health Department and uh, myself along with my staff, and really everybody here was out at um, BCC Pemberton, which was one of the uh, shelter sites. Um, to set it up and I think the thing um, for me that really resonated is I needed to wear two hats out there. One was really to help with logistics and operations but I think the other thing that was really important was to be present in the moment with the people who were going through you know such trauma you know associated with uh, just losing everything yeah in a blink of an eye so trying to be present and available to support people was a really important role out there for me.
I think, it, you know, it was um, a, a very long 10 days for me um, because I kind of had a role in just about every aspect of our response. Um, but the, the piece that I take most pride in um, is our Medical Reserve Corps. Yes. And um, we, this is a group of volunteers that have agreed to help us in disasters and an emergency. And I've been working with this group now for um, eight or nine years. And so a lot of the leadership things that I've learned through this project, I can apply to this group and leading these volunteers um, because they are a remarkable group of people that volunteered 24 seven for 10 days at two shelter sites um, because they cared that much about helping their community. And to me, that's just phenomenal. And so using a lot of what we've gained through this project, we can apply it to working and even making these, this volunteer corps even stronger. For my final thoughts, I'm a person that really loves a good quote. And I got this quote by Mary Lou Anderson that speaks about leaders. And she says, leaders are called to stand in that lonely place between the no longer and the not yet and intentionally make decisions that will bind, forge, move, and create history. We are not called to be popular. We are not called to be safe. We are not called to follow. We are the ones called to take risks. We are the ones called to change attitudes, to risk displeasure. We are the ones called to gamble our lives for a better world. When I began my leadership process, and it's a journey, it continues, it never ends. I was fearless when I started on my path. If April's going to pull out quotes, so will I. The great late Herb Brooks head coach of the USA 1980 gold medal winning ho hockey team once said, great moments are born from great opportunity. What each NLAF member has right now is just that, a great opportunity that we can turn into great moments or great programs or great initiatives. I wish I could bottle up the inspiration and motivation I took home with me on that last day of our NLAF retreat. The next best thing I can do is read through PowerPoint slides for presentations or read over my personal notes from the retreat to try to gain back some of that feeling. What my generation of public health professionals is dealing with right now is going to be something we all talk about later in life. A time when budget cuts are common and lack of funding is nothing new. It's what we do with the little that we have that will make the difference moving forward. And that's what NLAF is all about.